What's up, bench warmers? We're back in our own studios. We haven't been able to record, sadly because of the coronavirus outbreak, and we're all diligently taking care of ourselves, um, spending time in quarantine, so we are being safe, and we are following a lot of the guidelines and recommendations to keep others safe. That said, it doesn't mean that the bench warmers are done. We've just taken a bit of a hiatus, but we are back, and we want to bring something special to all of you, all of our listeners, our followers, and those who are watching and staying tuned with our channels. We sat down today with some of the amazing, great team from LA Techers. They represent tech ball over on the West Coast. So being here on the opposite side, it's very interesting to know what they're getting into. Um, these are some fantastic people from what we've heard and what we've learned about. And a little bit of background on them we'll get shortly. But I just wanted to intro everyone to this new podcast episode that's going to take over our Monday slot. and. I want to let everyone know that we will come back and get to our regular postings. We are still in quarantine, as many are recommended to do so. Um, we're dying to get back onto the pitch. We definitely need a lot of football back in our lives on the weekends to give us something to do. But in the meantime, we're going to strive to get you some great, amazing content so that you can sit down, watch, and enjoy with the rest of us on the bench. All right, what's up, bench warmers? We are live recording in Zoom in our rooms, but we're with the LA Techers team. We have some very special guests for you today. You see them on our grid uh, mixed with the rest of us, so I want to go ahead and introduce everybody and give everyone a chance to say a little bit about themselves. Uh, I'll start with Carolyn because she has a very nice background behind her. Uh, Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, your involvement with, uh, the LA Tigers team, and I guess uh, just some background. Sure. So uh, my name is Carolyn Greco, and I have been an LA Tigger since um, early January. And uh, my background really is more in um, football I've, or soccer. I'm a professional soccer player mostly, but um, as of recently, I'm a full-time tech ball player. And so um, my soccer background before, um, you know, playing tech ball was um, in 2019, I was with the LA Galaxy OC. Um, we won a national title. It was very exciting. And, uh, nice. and yeah, it was really fun. Um, relatively short season, though. Um, so it was nice to have this tech ball come up um, right after. But um, prior to that, I was in Europe for a few years. I was in Switzerland. I played for uh, Lugano, which is um, the Italian region of Switzerland, actually. So it was really fun. I I got to learn a lot about my own culture while I was there as well. So it was a fun life experience. And yeah, before that, I was in college. I went to Sonoma State in Northern California, and we were um, the undefeated um, conference champions that year. Yeah, and I was an All-American alongside um, actually a fellow Tecker. Uh, Margie Osmondson, who's also an All-American at the program. So, yeah, that's a little just, bit of my soccer background. Big one. Sorry. Just for the <laughs> for the podcast specifically, I just want to mention that you are also along the lines of the great Invincible Arsenal. So thank you for bringing that up in your introduction <laughs> to, your, to your historic <laughs> footballing career. So thank you. Oh, yeah, totally an Arsenal fan. Oh, I, oh. So is this where I <laughs> <Doors> exit? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I wanted general. I wanted to keep it neutral, man. Like just intros. <laughs> just she was, she said, she said invincible. I heard invincible, and that's where we're going. <laughs> in all honesty, I'm actually in the English Premier League. I prefer Manchester United. I can, I can, oh, yeah. you guys have a good one. Thank you guys. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank Haters you guys. gonna hate. Hate is gonna hate. Mom, I want to say that hate. I was this oh. close. To wearing my members only Tottenham uh, what, a scarf this close. Wow. Good thing you did it. Right. Good yeah. thing you did it. Glad you chose the tech ball team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I, she has, listen, she's a decorated player, she's accomplished, and she's a United fan. All around package. Carolyn Greco. Fantastic <laughs> to have you on. 
Thank you. Uh, yeah. uh, moving on to Nancy, uh, I know you have a more neutral background, but you decided to go with more of a casual outfit today instead of the members only scarf, thankfully. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself, Nancy. Give us some uh, background with LA Techers and also any involvement that you've had with, uh, with the soccer community. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, hey, everyone. My name is Nancy. And uh, yeah, I started playing tech ball as of this year. So January of this year. Um, that's one great thing in 2020 that started for me. Um, I also have played soccer my entire life. I've played soccer since I was like six years old. Um, played locally here uh, in California as well uh, for Cal State Northridge. Um, I actually played in the U UWS against Carroll's team, which we took the national uh, championship title the year before they did. <laughs> um, so we're kind of rivals in the UWS. Um, but we're fellow teammates for the LA Tuckers. Um, I also currently play for my for my national team for the Armenian national team, um, which actually just kicked off. We started our we had our first game against Lithuania right before actually the borders closed, but um, we tied one one. Um, and yeah, I mean my experience with tech ball has been great. Um, I've played professionally as well uh, in Italy for Lazio. Um, and then my soccer career kind of just, you know, played different places here in California. Um, and then now I'm just doing full-time tech ball as well as uh, playing with my national team. So it's been great. That's awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> How's the so rugby is, uh, too? Yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, you think about players, you know, playing the for each other the same club but against each other in country or vice versa. How's that with you guys? Yeah, um, we actually, we met each other um, a little more recently. So it'll be interesting. Well, I don't know if like this season, this season, how it's going to pan out um, as far as scheduling goes. Um, but we've kind of talked about possibly playing on the same team this, this year. <laughs> so, you know, we'll see how it goes. I don't mind having the first the first news when it comes to transfer. So thank you for the heads up on that. Everybody heard that right? Cool. All right. Well, we didn't say uh, I was transferring or if Carol was. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. uh, true, true, true. So, and that's I mean the, the link of the song cliffhanger. So yeah, yeah. Let them figure it out. The link of the song. Well, that must be exciting when you have uh, someone of that caliber that you've played against, and then. The idea of teaming up with them, it's kind of like when you choose the best player to be on your five aside and you just know you think they're going to be so much better. It's probably just like that. I see you both smiling, so you probably both think the same thing. They yeah. can't be together. They're captains. <laughs> Separate them. Something like that. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's been great. We got to play together, actually, for the first time in, like, a futsal tournament. Um, and... Yeah, and we kind of kept in touch and, and played again together out there at the same uh, at the same facility. And then it just ended up working out that we were both on um, doing tech ball together. So it's great. That's awesome. That's an awesome way to start a, a partnership like that. And speaking of a partner, we have a, a um, additional bench warmer. We have Andres with his with his red shirt on sporting the bench warmers logo, which we fully appreciate. So thank Ooh. you, Andres. Uh, we had the the lucky opportunity to run into Andres and to spend some time with him over in Baltimore during the United Soccer Coaches Convention. Um, we know a little bit about you, Andres, but for the rest of our audience, would you mind giving us some of your background, uh, your soccer background, which I know is a bit uh, a bit extensive, like Nancy, and what your role is right now with the LA Techers? Yeah, so um, I'm following up two great ladies who obviously have a lot of soccer experience, Nancy and Carol. It's great to be part of your team and play with you every day. So, yeah, shout out to you girls. Um, well, yeah, my soccer background uh, is similar to Nancy and Carol. I've been playing my whole life ever since I was four years old and I saw a ball rolling. I was chasing that soccer ball. So um, I grew up in Uruguay um, and I moved to the United States when I was about 10 years old. And that was the time of my life when I kind of got away from soccer for a little bit. And I didn't play for like... I believe a year and a half, two years, and yeah, and they continued playing here in the United States, all through high school, 
And after one year of college, I decided the best thing for me was to uh, go back to Uruguay and try out. And after a couple of bouncing around from team to team, I was able to uh, land, um, like, get signed to the team at Tanque Sisley from Uruguay. And um, I ended up playing with them for a year and a half professionally. Um, gave me a lot of experience. Um, definitely helped me mentally to to grow as a player and to understand what kind of mentality you need to have as, as a player. Um, and yeah, after those two years, I found myself back in the United States, continue to bounce uh, around different teams, always try to play competitive. And I decided to move to California about two years ago, and I ran into into Tech Bowl um, out of nowhere. It was a very um, like a lucky chance, I would call it. I was playing for Santa Monica United, the ESL team at the time, and we received an email to participate in the World Cup of Tech Bowl. And I was the only one in the team that actually accepted and said yes to going. Uh, so I was able to participate in the World Cup of Tech Bowl in 2019, which was one of the coolest experiences that I've had to do in my life to this point. So, yeah, very happy happy for that. And ever since that trip, I've been able to uh, work for Tech Bowl and yeah, be uh, a brand ambassador as well, as well as a player. So I'm very happy. Yeah, very happy for the opportunity and excited to see what new things Tech Bowl is going to bring us expanding with the sport and meeting new people from all over the world, like you guys. So yeah, pretty much my little bit of my background um, from soccer leading up to tech ball. That's fantastic. That's awesome to hear. Uh, I remember you had mentioned that um, meeting and running into tech ball and kind of being the only one to take up the challenge, which kind of shows the, the kind of player that you are. And I do want to bring up one thing that I do remember from Baltimore that we spoke about, because uh, I think you are a fellow Madridista, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, for sure. See, these the, the two guys smiled already because they they know, cause they know, they just. Oh. Yeah, no, oh, wow. I, I, we we already had had the conversation already, so I I knew I knew I knew that there was another Madridista in this call. Yeah, I know. I know. Is it my Atletico or Real? Real Madrid. Real Madrid. No, Real Madrid, no, Real Madrid Papa. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. This is taking a turn too quickly. <laughs> I'm very I gotta go. About three. I can't teams. hear you guys. I gotta go. <laughs> they want to start your fight. I don't know if it's too early to get into all what teams you like. <laughs> I mean, you guys have. Listen, it. Yeah, you just have to. We have to put it out there. You have to get yeah. it out. Um, moving on to. Last but not least, and one of the other important members of this LA Tigers team, we have Mark. Mark, would you mind introducing yourself, telling us a little bit about your role? I know it's a bit different than uh, the rest of the your fellow team members here, but you also have uh, an important um, piece of this uh, tech ball journey here in the, in the U.S. Yeah, so uh, I'm Mark Milan. Um, so my background, I didn't play pro. Um, Basically, I played all my life. I played in a lot of uh, clubs, youth clubs, you know, high school. Um, I had talent, um, definitely, but uh, I was always interested in the subcultures of what soccer is. For example, when I was about 15 years old, 16 years old, nobody knew what futsal was in my community. Um, nobody sure. has ever taken the time to practice six hours doing 17 around the world in their backyard. That was me. I did that. Uh, nice. Every time I'd go to Colombia on my summer vacations, I'd play from, you know, when the sun came up and until the sun came down playing micro. Micro is basically futsal for Colombia. We would just play sure. micro. If I would go from one barrio to the next barrio, it's pretty much, hey, can I play? And that was me. So when I came to the United States, there really wasn't any of that. So that's just kind of the base of who I am. So I took up freestyling and futsal over playing high school and playing club. So by the time I was 16 years old, the very first Nike freestyle team was like, hey, dude, um, you know, do you want to come out and do a show with us? I said, okay, sure, whatever. I didn't ever think that freestyle would be a job for me, but uh, I've been doing that ever since I was 16 years old. So 
I'm 30 now. Um, and, okay. it's, and it's, uh, you know, it's financed a lot of my dreams. I've been to pretty much every state in the U S except for Alaska. I mean, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Alaska, if you want me there, I'll do a show. <laughs> um, just get me a big jacket with LA Techers on the back. Um, but uh, as part of my role for LA Techers comes again from my background, I've always been kind of a mover and a shaker. So I pretty much built the first futsal court in Orange County, California. And at one point I had a hundred people and this futsal court was inside of an apartment complex. Mind you, it was uh, a tennis court where we sawed off the, the two posts, right? So it was completely flat. I even, you know, put plaster of Paris on top. So that way, it, you know, you don't put your full foot inside of the hole. So this was the only futsal court inside of Orange County. And at one point we did a tournament where we had a hundred people. Um, and I'm 86 at the apartment complex. I am not allowed. I have a restriction or <laughs> restraining. <laughs> um, so that party is too hard, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, it wasn't a party. It was a futsal tournament run by me. So, um, at one point, even like, uh, uh, I don't know if you guys, uh, are familiar with, uh, well, now it is UPSL's Santa Ana wins. We used to have a professional teams practice there. And uh, I was like, oh, shoot, what did I just start? So I used that to catapult a lot of the subcultures within uh, soccer. So I know a lot of people. My network is pretty big. I mean, I know a lot of people out in where you guys are out from uh, New Jersey, pretty much every state. And so because of that connection, and I'm the guy that kind of knocks on your door until you answer, <laughs> um, I've kind of used those skills and a lot of my networking, again, uh, I'm also a businessman. Uh, before this, I was selling cars. So now I'm using my soccer experience and networking with my experience in selling uh, to put tech ball into everybody's home and make everybody aware of what tech ball is. So I'm using those skills. So I'm behind the scenes. The techers are in front of the scenes using their skills and then taking on the challenge of you know, going to different places showing people how to play tech ball but i'm definitely behind the scenes but uh don't you think that i can't play tech ball though because i definitely mark mark you can't hang uh, yeah. oh, oh, wow. that sounds like a challenge to me so i'm just saying if you record that what's online i love you i'm just messing not fired i actually have so, to, I don't, I have a full story of how i okay. got involved with tech ball um sure so in south america this game is more known as fuchi meza you know foot meza mesa ball tech bomb whatever so uh the facility that's really close to me we got together and i was like dude we should definitely have one of these and they're like let's make one so they made one and they got me and my buddy that played foot volley um to go over there and, and play on it we played on it so much that tech ball just basically dm'd us and said hey you want a free table you should play on our table instead of making your own so that's how the first the first involvement of me getting into tech ball was here have a free table and i was like all right dope let's do it you know <laughs> what a story yeah that's we're awesome start, we're gonna see a lot more people posting their videos for free tables now <laughs> yeah. I'm down, dude. Ball. As long as I got social involvement across social media, I'm down. You'll be getting a DM from me. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be getting a knock on the front door. So we, we had some shot some shots fired earlier. Uh who is the best tech ball player out of you four? Ooh. I think we could quantify that now. Like I think we have actual stats because Andres won <laughs> oh. tournament. So I guess barely. I beat him the day before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a tough competitor. I pulled the barely on him. Oh, Technically, we only God. played one set though. We didn't play the three sets the day before, so not yeah, real win. <laughs> Still, that was that was a tough game, Carol. Holy crap! Oh my gosh, that was crazy. That was um, me and Andres played against each other in the quarterfinals. I was the only other person to take him to three sets that day. I was his first loss that day. Okay. <laughs> My first loss that day. You go, girl. 
<laughs> I love it. Yeah, I went undefeated that day until I played Andres. So, and then, um, so the way the tournament works is you play three sets to 12. And sure. um, so me and Andres played the first set and he won the first set. And that was my first loss that day at that point. And um, so then I went into the second set and I was telling myself to channel, this is true story. I was telling myself to channel my inner Billie Jean King. I don't know if you guys know who that is, but she's a famous tennis yeah, player. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, anyway, and then I came back and won the second set, but then lost the third set. Um, it was crazy. Uh, but, oh, right. <laughs> it, it's a rally that counted. It was the rally back that counted. He was yeah. shook. He was shook. Right? And that was my first loss of the day. I was like, I'm kind of proud of myself for like coming back. But Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> that was an awesome <laughs> game. Yeah. No, Andres, you were like on fire that day. I was I was just locked in. How was Yeah, we can get a word play? in with Andres that day, to be honest. I was like, Are you good, Andres? You good? Like I was checking up with him. He was completely just zoned in at the cup. And I was like, he's going to take this. Got it. Yeah. It, it was, I mean, yeah, it was my mentality to just think calm and, and just focus on the on the moment. Just making sure that inside my head, I'm not, like, beating myself. And, uh, yeah, so the first person to win is, you know, is your mind. You have to tell yourself you're going to win if you want to win it. And I guess that was my mentality, just staying positive and relaxed and just remembering to breathe. I mean, uh, the tournament can get going, and once it's going and your adrenaline is pumping and you're breathing heavy and everything's going fast, it can get away from you. And I guess one of the key things for me was to always remember, breathe, and make sure I'm thinking of uh, every, every second I'm playing, I'm thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah, it's so easy to get in your head, like in these, um, yeah. you know? So, yeah. For sure, for sure. Yeah, and I think that the short sets, like, you know, you only played a 12 point. And so I think that, you know, every point is so important and all of the pressures like on you, it, that's where it's different than soccer. Every single point in rally, it's coming, you know, you're going to touch the ball. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Mo yeah. momentum has a huge influence. Yeah, momentum is a lot. Oh, yeah. And uh, World Cup and the Tech for World Cup, how many points? They, they go up. to 20%. 20%. Usually, uh, usually it's one game, so 20. So whoever wins the first game is uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's pretty much over. Uh, we did it a, di a little different. We are trying out uh, best of three sets to 12 points. That was our, our motto. That, could be that was a nice setup that... A nice setup that uh, Nancy and Carol giving you these assists so you can start talking about your game, Andres. Uh, I hope you appreciate that. Kind of pushed me in there, right? It pushed me into the conversation. <laughs> yeah, Andres is just a little, I mean, like, he's so humble and, like, he won't, you know, so gotta give him credit where it's due. He's such a great person. Sure. Yeah. 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 Credit where it's due is right because uh, we hear that you have a, a certain ranked number right now. I don't know if you well, want to tell everyone what that is. I guess after the, after the, yeah, the Challenger Cup. There's like a ranking system. Obviously, I won it, so I'm happy to say I'm ranked number one right now. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, come on. Yeah. Man. Mm. All right, Andres. Mr. Humble over there. <laughs> I guess they took it all. So. He said, listen, yeah. I was in the cup, and whoever wins is number one, so I guess I'm number one. <laughs> You know how that is, you know, it doesn't stop there. You know how it is. You, you win the first one, and then you got to defend it. So I take a, a lot right. of pride in my. And yeah, I mean, gonna, we're coming for you. I'll go out and defend my title. Yeah. I'll challenge you, but I won't, I won't succeed. So. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I tried. Trust me. You have the table. I tried. The most. Like, I tried. I, I serve you the ball, but I, I can't. So. <laughs> I just serve you the I'll, ball. I'll set you up. <laughs> <laughs> I want to transition really quick so I can get uh, Nancy and Carol a little bit into the conversation because I know they're eager to, to speak and speaking specifically about this all-female run tech ball club that you're trying to start. Can you guys elaborate a little bit on this club? We're kind of, you know, in the works right now. Um, 
but it will be like an all female tech ball club that we're kind of starting to um, put together between myself, Carol, and uh, Margie, who's also another uh, techer of ours who just recently joined um, with the team. And, um, you know, I think we've all kind of heard and in some form or another that there's this, we are talking about it today is there's such a decline with um, females just dropping out of sports. Um, so I think just like our whole motto is to really empower women and give them like an opportunity um, in this new, new uh, sport, you know, and Carol, you can kind of add in. Yeah, I think that um, Nancy's talking about how like really as early as 10 years old, um, women and young females are dropping out at rates um, faster. Um, and so I think that causes less opportunities in the future. Um, there are less women out there trained to play. Nancy and I, I feel very fortunate for us to have landed this tech ball gig because, you know, um, I feel that, you know, there isn't a professional NWSL team in LA and we are both professional soccer players who happen to be in LA at this time. I mean, we got super lucky with that timing. Um, and so just the fact that there are not very many opportunities for women and platforms out there for women to be in sports, this is not a sport like soccer. It's not a contact sport. And so we're really trying to empower women um, and really uplift one another. Um, and we're, I, we're hoping to have a really strong team of strong women. We brought up some fun names of people we know that we hope to get involved. And, you know, we're not going to spoil anything because everything is very much so in the beginning stages of this project. But, sure. you know, this is the second tech ball club in the United States. And so we're really hoping that this can turn something uh, into something, you know, really big and beautiful because the women, um, on the U.S. national team and historically have just set such a high standard that, um, you know, it's an honor to be a pioneer in this with like Nancy and Margie and hopefully that this turns into something great. So, yeah. Just to see the enthusiasm on both of your faces, I think it's going to be a really great success. I know for us um, personally with the tech ball table specifically, um, explaining it, the experience to Mark a little bit earlier. Um, when we brought the table over to this uh, Sky Blue FC game, it was the last home game for the uh, Red Bulls at Red Bull Arena. We had so many young girls who were just excited to see how good they actually were on the table. So you have this family coming in, uh, maybe five uh, uh, young girls aged from like, I don't know, like 9, 10, up to maybe like 13, 14. And, you know, usually someone would shyly walk up to the table. I'm sure you've seen a lot of that. They would just approach the table very coyly, kind of uh, embarrassed or nervous a little bit. And as soon as the first serves come out and they see that they can control it with, with their thigh or with their head, um, then they get excited and they get right into it. So I really, I appreciate, we all appreciate the fact that you're taking the initiative to start this um, all-female club for tech ball. But I wanted to ask you, because you did mention something about the, the women's players, and it might inject a bit of controversy, but I, I want it. I want to get it out of you guys. What is your take? What is your feeling on this, um, the latest, uh, I would say even, drama with the gender pay gap between the men's and the women's national team? There was some news recently that came out, and the ruling was a bit skewed. Uh, but that's a personal opinion, um, where some arguments were made that the men's team should earn higher than the women's team. Um, of course, uh, I want to know what, what you both feel, having played um, professionally, having played, having played most of your lives, trying to empower other um, young girls and women to play as well. Uh, what is your take on, on this situation, if you want to add a little bit on that? Yeah, I mean, I think it goes without saying that, like, we, I mean, even, like, just, you know, with tech ball, like, you know, Andres has played with us, uh, Mark, you've played with us, like, we as women are no different, like, we can play as well, we're as strong, we can, it's, it, there is nothing different, I personally am, I think it's, 
completely ridiculous. Uh, the statements that I read in the article um, and like what I've seen, I think it's like we've come far, you know, we've come very far, but we still have a lot of progress that needs to be made. And I think this is kind of like a take with like with us having this all female club is it, it will like pave a way for to show that we too can hang and there is really no difference with with tech ball we are given the opportunity to play with with men at a high level and um i think that's actually pretty cool but yeah is in regards to that i just think that it's not acceptable at all honestly did you want to add something to that carol oh sure, yeah i mean i would completely agree with nancy obviously um i personally had my own experience playing professional sports and um, receiving a very low pay. Um, so it was very difficult because we were living in one of the most expensive countries in the world on, you know, um, just a couple hundred bucks every few weeks. And it was, so it was really, it was really tough to make ends meet. Um, so, I mean, but at the same time, I recognize that it is a business and, you know, you do have to generate revenue in order to pay your players. And, um, sure. and at the time, um, when I had started on the team, we eventually gained more money every year that I was there. Um, our salary, it got bigger, which is a, gr a great sign. Um, we re it's also because we were playing well, we had opportunities for bonuses for wins and things like that. And so that was right. cool. Changes in payment structure was, were really nice, but honestly, um, the conditions were, and I think that um, I recognize that there are differences between the men's and the women's game, um, but I don't think that it necessarily has to change the quality. Of it. Um, so I just think that, yeah, like I said, the quality of the game is just different. I don't think that the women's side is um, less so than that of the men's side in terms of um, skill, which is why I really appreciate tech ball. And I think that Nancy and I, you know, we played against predominantly men in that tech ball tournament singles tournament that just happened. And we both qualified in the top eight. So, um, I think that, um, speaks for itself. Yeah. You tell them, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> if I may add a little something here, just on like the business side, um, participation side. All the numbers. Definitely. Um, our first uh, Tech Ball Challenger Cup, uh, I know these guys are talking about uh, the cups that they went to. We've had two Challenger Cups, uh, which is going to be a fully sanctioned uh, tournament uh, behind uh, what Tech Ball is. And they're all backed up by FITEC, which is basically like the governing body, FIFA, FITEC. Um, you get the gist. So our first Tech Ball tournament, the Challenger Cup in LA, which is uh, Los Alamitos. Uh, correct but we had the most women take the challenge take the call and show up for the first challenger cup and this is the biggest number of women um participating in the world so tech ball has been around since 2014 we've been around for a couple months and uh nine women took the call to challenge themselves in a tournament having played maybe a couple times and then the second highlight I want to make is, you guys remember, Giuliani, uh, a great football player, uh, got to, I think, was it the the quarterfinals, guys? Can you guys confirm? Semis. Semis. Oh, yeah. Semis. Well, one of the finals, she teamed up with uh, U.S. Semis. Beach National Oscar Reyes, so which great, great couple there. And uh, they went against a very well seasoned veteran team, which is the Phoenix the Tech Ball Club. They know each other. They play with each other. They're from Hungary, the first sport of the uh, you know the first place of the sport. And they took away one set against like the guys that are probably like, second rank, ranked in the world. So Giuliani um, definitely uh, did really well. So that just goes to show you. This, this table um, is really good at doing one thing for a soccer player, showing your flaws, right? So it's a common denominator. It puts everybody on an equal yeah. playing field. 
So when we have our women go and play, they're like, well, here's a great example of how everybody could show their real skills. This common denominator just equalized everybody. And as you can see, Carol and Nancy are doing an amazing job right now. And hopefully think that this new club that we're trying to uh, initiate competitors and hopefully by 2028, maybe, maybe the gender doesn't even matter. Maybe it might be a, a, a group of girls that win gold for an overall tech ball. Um, so our company is very female forward and I just want that to go on record. That's fantastic. I, I like that idea of having the common denominator being the flaws in your game. And uh, to reiterate something that both uh, Nancy and Carol said, it gives you the opportunity as as a female player to step up with a male player and show them what you really got. It, it's kind of like the, that level playing field. I think that's, that's a, a tremendous way to show uh, the value um, as a player, as a female player in uh, in the game in, in soccer, we um, I guess for us uh, on the bench, we've seen a few examples of uh, of great uh, female players when we were at the Baltimore convention actually, and we attended that tech world tournament at the end. Uh, Ricky was there with uh, with us, and so was Marco, and we we got to see uh, some. I believe it was uh, some other professional players that joined as well, as well as uh, th this former uh, uh, women's national team legend with uh, Brandy Chastain. And I think it's a very interesting way to put, uh, I guess, the, the big argument that female players are just as good or can be even better. Actually, if I can Which add is a little something, uh, the, the best... Uh, player from the whole Baltimore trip, the best player to uh, to perform the first time on the table was actually this this girl, I think uh, from New York. She, her name is Skills Challenges on Instagram, and she came on the table and she was the person who did did uh, the best out of anyone I've seen jump on the table for the first time. And she was a, a female guy, so you know that's that yes. to show you. Um, hey man, she's from. Uh, no, you're right. Um, and speaking to our experience uh, at Sky Blue and Red Bull Arena at the Boulevard with the tech ball table, um, the first most impressive person on the on the table was I think she was like a six year old girl who just came on, just got the flow of it with the actual Red Bull. I believe it was one of the the freestylers that kept going back and yeah. forth, and this girl was. I think six years old. She was. I was so was impressed. Singing. And wow. I mean, I was falling all over the place, and this girl was composing herself. And I was like, right. I had, I took my hat off her. It was awesome. Great. Great. Oh, falling down. <laughs> <laughs> he got shook. Like. Uh, yeah. Whoa! That's uh, I know. He's, his phone yeah, is he's trembling too. now. <laughs> He's like, he's thinking about you that. Think six years old? <laughs> then he lost, man. Ricky, Ricky, how old is she? Oh, no, I think I was, just... she was young, but this yeah, she was between six and nine. Like, it wasn't. Was she wasn't. She was young. She was definitely young. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. I believe. I believe actually, Andres, the um, uh, the player you're 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 speaking about. I, I know her name is Tristan. She runs um, uh, PS90 soccer challenges over in New York, in upstate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She has, yeah. Just uh, Tristan Studeville. She's really good. Uh, I remember the, her. Those but... challenges on Instagram. Correct. Yeah, yeah. And she, uh, I think it was. She also runs a a, a camp called Sucker Girl Prob. Mm -hmm. And it was it, it's for um at risk uh, young female soccer players. There are soccer camps that she provides uh, for this specific demographic. I believe her background is a goalie specifically, wow. um, but but I do I do remember who you're talking about, and and it's definitely true. I, I mean, I didn't know that it was her first time, but of course, you having seen so many players uh, over time, uh, I'm sure that if it made that much of a of an impression on you that you're bringing it up now, then that just speaks to to what Nancy and Carl was saying that you know females can bring their game. Yeah, for sure. I, I was very so, impressed. 
One thing I want to switch over to uh, really quick, just to kind of uh, loosen it up a little bit, and we were talking about it just before we started officially recording. What are some things that you guys have been doing to keep yourselves busy? Cooking. <laughs> Playing trivia with my friends on an app. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, learning TikTok. That's going to be my... <laughs> Catch me on TikTok, people. I post weird videos. I've, yeah. been working. I've just been contacting people and I'm playing tech ball outside. Um, I'm going to have to admit, I do live close to a lot of uh, soccer coaches and fellow football players. So I'm trying to stay as responsible as possible, but we all have the need for competition. So they come over and we go one on one on a couple of challenges. That's awesome. One on one Hedgenia. I don't know if you guys know what Hedgenia is. It's a small little net for football players. We play on that. We make shift tables. We'll put anything as a tech ball thing. So that's one way we, you know, we're trying to do. But uh, yeah, learning weird challenges, how to you know, juggle weird things, and putting them up on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> there, there was um, some talk about your team. Do you guys all follow a specific soccer team? Are you guys all fans of a specific team that you follow die hard? Barca. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, yes, Ricardo, my man. That's right. Okay, well, we'll end, uh, I guess we come up with a <laughs> Listen, I follow three teams. Oh, look it. Hard. Diego left the chat. <laughs> hey, first and foremost is my is my family team, which is America de Cali of Colombia. I mean, okay, Respect. if my dad could have named me America, he would have. Okay, let's put it that way. Okay. Um, second is questionable. My dad, one of my dad's favorite players was Paul ba Gascoigne, so Tottenham Hotspurs. And three, okay. only lover till I die. Atletico Madrid. So I'm I'm everybody's like, oh dude, you like those teams? Sorry. Sorry, mm. man. They're almost they're always almost there, but can't make it over the line. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're that guy. You're that guy. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I have monthly bills for all these random like Fubo TV, like all these things just to watch these games. Cause I I, I mean they're not the highlight games, so I have to pay to watch them. You know, and uh, yeah, that's I it. wonder why they're not. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> that's <Yeah>. fire. <laughs> oh, sorry about that, Mark. <laughs> I don't have to pay for Fubo to watch it's been all my life, man. I'm in the second division for like eight years, and they just finally came back to win a championship in the A. So, those are my right. teams. Mark, aka crazy. America. I think we got your nickname. No. I mean, it's El Cucuy. <laughs> you know that. Oh, El Cucuy. But... El Cucuy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, where did, that, where did that name come from? Man, you know, you want to know the story? I'll tell you the story. It's kind of funny. Um, That's what this is for, man. All right. So, <laughs> one time, uh, I was in L.A., and I got lost, right? So, L.A., you take a wrong turn. You're maybe seven years old. You might run into a scary homeless man. And so, so this one homeless man just goes up to me and goes, Hey, mijo, ¿sabes quién soy? Soy el cucuy. <laughs> and I just flip out. I went to my mom and I'm like, Mom, I think I meant the real el cucuy. I'm so scared. And for those of you that are not Hispanic, uh, el cucuy is the boogeyman. Okay? So, yeah. I was so scared, and at that time, I was like, still I am today, a huge Batman reader. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to take my fear, my childhood trauma, and create something out of it. So um, fast forward to when I used to play a lot of street games in L.A. and O.C., be, like every time I'd score a goal, I'd be like, yes, right, dude, fear me, I'm El Cucuy. So that kind of, that's how it came about. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. 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 That is awesome. No, that's awesome. Equivalent to La Llorona? No, yeah. different. No. Yeah, not different. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Good to know. Because <laughs> I went and watched that movie with a friend, and yeah. Mm. I don't think they did it justice. 
I don't think they did it yeah, justice. No. Oh, no, wow. Um, How about you, Andres? No, we are teams. Uh, so Aside from Madrid. Uh, well, growing up in Uruguay, uh, I was always a fan of Peñarol. Um, Peñarol is <laughs> where they strike black and yellow shirt. Um, then, as a little kid, I also liked Arsenal growing up. My favorite player was no, not, now he's just, not just playing favorites, man. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, man, listen. This is me, like, I will, a year old kid. I, will, like, I used to like Dennis Bergkamp and, and Gary and Reed. That was the, the duo. You know, who, who didn't like that I, team? Yeah. So, yeah, that was my favorite team at the time. I'll and then, to uh, you, I think listen. that was the last time I, I liked Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, look. Yeah, I, I, I tried. 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 You know, get me excited. And just give oh, that, little, that, little, that little blow right there, man. That was, that was good. You built me up and brought me right down pretty quick. So thank you for that. I, 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 I tried. <laughs> I tried staying with Arsenal all these years and, you know, like following them. And they might get it right again. But, you know, I think Listen, the, man. They might get it right again. <laughs> There was only only time will tell. Gray hair, small distress. So, yeah. Did you guys, uh, did you guys <laughs> ever play FIFA 2002 on PlayStation? All the yes. time. I played a game. Oh, okay, yeah. all time. You remember how it was like almost OP to use Arsenal and Thierry Henry? Yeah. I would still was. never pick time. that team because I was a ton of. I don't care who you are. I'm still not playing with you. I I'm still not playing with that team. <laughs> he took us back only to tell us that he was still not playing with you. Remember how good they were? I don't care. Yeah. I still don't play with you. That's what he's going to say. I'll tell you what it was. Well, uh, Eric, awesome. Eric, you being, let, let me flip it to you, Eric. You being an hey, Arsenal fan, you think. Uh, Arsene Wenger staying for so long actually hurt the team? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I think Hindsight, it's... looking at it now, you know, to start the, the transition period. Again, for any team, I think it's kind of better to start it off on an earlier note as opposed to Arsenal who started so late. Now we're just kind of playing catch up with everybody else. So, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's kind of like a, you know, bittersweet. You know, he, he bought so much for us at the same time. It's like, all right. Thank you, but your time has kind of passed. Yep. Then you kind of like, you know, Mourinho, up. in my opinion, you know, it kind of has his coaching mentality. It's kind of in the past already, so it's time to move forward. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that's not happening now, but that's the way, you know, I, I, I look at it. Yeah, I agree. You're going to get emotional now, Andres, man. <laughs> hey, man, you got to be hurt right now. Listen, I was, listen, I was excited because things are looking good. Like, you were coming back. We can get back to top four Champions League. Here we come. Season's canceled. Oh crap, man! He <laughs> just canceled. I'm glad. Yeah, man. <laughs> so, if there's one thing I miss of uh, watching in the weekend is soccer. Um, yeah. We would wake up 7:30, start watching, it, and we wouldn't stop until four o'clock, five o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. You know, I'm watching Columbia rerun games. Uh, I, I mean, dude. Some of those like World Cup games, like Brazil versus Colombia, it just hurts me right here, dude. I just, I just watch Colombia rerun games. Yeah. Me, what time? Send you games. our highlights. What? Me and Carol can send you our highlights. You can watch our highlights. Yeah, send it on over. Yeah. Take I want to see. I want to see that set. I want to see that set that Carol won. Yeah. Oh, I actually Do we have, have that. Too. Yeah, Carol. This the entire. Oh. That we don't have, but I have um some good uh clips from that game. Some good, black, some good black. Oh my gosh, clips. I haven't even seen that, I don't, or maybe I haven't. Because um, I'm trying to clip a video together that I have to send in, but um yeah, I've got it all. Oh wow, I'm excited. <laughs> to add our our second Challenger Cup, which was in San Diego, um extremely successful, a lot of great talent, um but we had to have closed doors on it so we had to only invite players and maybe a plus one so getting um capture for all that was very difficult um so uh everybody was hand sanitized referees had gloves on uh, we were trying to uh cooperate with all the uh, safety measures so kind of difficult to, to capture that but yeah Challenger cup yeah. number two was awesome andres congratulations again Thank you, sir. Thank well, you. Are you guys planning on going anywhere? Um, well, hopefully, in the near future, outside of California for these Challenger Cups. Because if you want to challenge, I'll challenge you. 
Not sure how far I get, but I'll challenge you. Yeah, you know, yeah man. <laughs> um, yes, we are. We're trying to take over all of the U.S. For example, right now I'm compiling a list right. of people of interest. Of course, you guys are out in New Jersey. You guys are definitely people of interest that I want to collaborate with. That's part of my job, actually, um, and get you guys to get a lot of tech ball involvement. Uh, tech ball involvement can start with a couple of people, and then it can blow up to 32 people and then a fully sanctioned uh, challenge cup. Um, to give you an example, I started kind of putting people inside of uh, Deaf Touch, which is my no local facility with just about four, went from four to 10 to 12 to a fully uh, sanctioned cup. So that's that's basically your question is uh, the seed of our growth is uh, plan on going here and there, of course, 100%. So if anybody else is watching this outside of uh, California and New Jersey, um, I'm your guy. I, if you're a person of interest, if you're a mover and a shaker, just like I am, we're going to be putting tech ball tables in front of you. Uh, you see, that was called Deaf Touch, your facility? Yeah, Deaf Touch is actually That's one of the name. first, uh, Deaf Touch is one of the first uh, small five-a-side, three-a-side places right here in Los Alamitos. That was our first Challenger Cup. Okay, that's awesome. I, I like the name Death Touch. That's uh, that's pretty sweet. Yeah. So one thing I want to move on to next. What is something that Tech Ball has given you as far as your skills or helped you improve compared to your past experience as a player? Obviously, like uh, said, this is one. So you are going to get more of the ball no matter what. Um, in your experience, what's something that Tech Ball has helped you? And let's say maybe in skill and control. Um, if you can elaborate on what Tech Ball has, has given back to you since you started playing it. Got it. Who do you want to start with first? Who wants to shed some light? Oh, let's start with, and with Andres. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I'll give, I think uh, I wrote it down last night. I was going over the, a couple answers for that. And I think what coming back to me was uh, your first touch. Um, first touch greatly improved with the game. Um, and if you know first touch in soccer and in tight spaces, it, it can make all the difference. So um, I think it's definitely something that, you know, by improving your first touch, you buy yourself time on the field to, to read the game better. You know, when you take a good first touch, you have more time to think about your next position. You don't have to adjust your body as much. Um, so yeah, the, I think the improvement of the first touch and being able to have a feeling of the weight of the ball on your foot and knowing how hard to put pressure on your first touch is key. And yeah, it translates to the, to the game when, you know, you're in a tight space and you need to take that good first touch close to your body. And I feel like that's when, uh, yeah, that's, that's where you improve the most. If Nancy or Carol wants to chime in, what's something that you feel like football <laughs> has added to your game? Yeah, um, I can definitely agree that uh, first touch and control would be top on my list as well. Um, and honestly, just day to day makes such a huge difference with tech ball. It's it's absolutely like I I can't even explain it. It's like when I look back at when I like even from you know like I review how I was doing from a week prior. Um, it was just so much skill that was changing. And even up until um, this last like singles challenger cup, I was like, you guys, it's crazy, but there's things that just will like click and you're just like, wow. But I remember um, actually after having like a good amount of time in tech ball and transitioning and then playing out on the field and I was playing um, and I played in like a co-ed uh, league outdoor seven aside. And I remember having my first game and I was like, and I came back the next day and I was telling my, uh, telling everyone, I was like, you guys, I don't know what it, if it's like tech ball or what, what it is, but like, I felt like my touch at the ball was just glued to my foot. Like there wasn't a single bad touch. It was crazy. And I was like, I don't know if it was just, I had an on game or if it's just tech ball, but then I slowly started to realize that, no, it's, it's actually tech ball. It's helping improve with all those, um, those skills so definitely has has helped in that for sure yeah the amount of time we're playing tech ball and the amount of touches we're getting on the ball is you know it's it's a lot so naturally it, it just transitions into your 
into your game? Yeah, I think that um, for me, where I felt like I've improved the most is um, particularly when I'm when I'm juggling when I was a soccer player, I usually didn't use the inside of my foot much. Um, and actually, you have so much control with the inside of your foot when the ball is in the air, actually um, come to realize. And I think that um, my inside of my foot on both feet has improved dramatically. Um, yeah, so the awesome. inside foot control, first touch, and then overall control, feeling like you have some dominance over the ball. Uh, Ricky, has tech ball added anything to your game? Um, yes. <laughs> it, uh, it definitely pointed out all my weaknesses, which is not- <laughs> Your decision making improves, like um, you know, like especially when when you get when you receive a fast serve, you know, you have to really make a decision really fast. Um, whether you know, like what part of your body you're gonna use, or if you're gonna play to yourself or pass it to your partner, you know. So like the decision aspect of it, it it's really improves and it it helps you like stay focused and stay on your toes the whole time. What about you, Eric? Uh, aside from bruises, what else has Tech Ball given you? <laughs> it's shown me that I will never go pro. So. <laughs> as much as I try, as much as I try, you know. But nah, it's it's honestly like like everybody said, it's the first touch, the decision making, just uh, your your presence on the ball, controlling it, the inside of your foot, everything. It's it does improve your game overall. Um, unfortunately, you know we're kind of stuck in our houses right now. We can't play as much. Um, I think are you guys playing a lot right now over there or no? Are you kind of limited too? Yeah, we're we we're pretty limited, but um, as, yeah. <laughs> as Mark's like, where? Uh, <laughs> uh, you're on your own there. I'm I've social been distancing. Here. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but just talking about it, like you know, the whole like passing the ball to one another, getting you know to the other side, it, it's kind of getting me excited for when we are allowed to be outside and able to play again. Hopefully, oh, yeah. that was the first thing. I want to get on, so I'm super excited for that. I like all your guys' comments about um, the tech ball improving first touch, uh, decision making, and all that kind of stuff. Because um, if I, I wish Johan Cruyff was alive right now, because I I love to quote him that um, that simple football is 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 hard to play. I, I I forget what the quote. It's something like. Playing football is very simple, but simple football is the hardest thing that there is. Um, and so with this game, you have to have a, a ton of patience. If you play one-on-one, the person that has the 90% chance of winning is the person that reduces their mistake. Then the hungry guy, the one that wants to play hard, is going to miss that point. Um, so if they want to slam it or something like that, you're reducing your point uh, uh, marking by a lot. So. Um, that's the greatest thing about this. And of course, it's going to highlight everybody, put the shroud of transparency on all your flaws. Mm -hmm. So that's the wonderful thing about Tech Ball. I love all the comments you guys are are, are, uh, stating. What's one of the the greatest returns or one of like the thickest returns that you guys have each done? Like uh, we saw one uh, that the freestylers were doing. I was just recalling it where like, let's say... uh, you reach uh, behind your back and you kind of like heel the ball back towards the table. Have any of you done something like that? I think Nancy has one of those tickets <laughs> plays recorded where she did a smash, kind of like karate kick, smash in the air. Uh, yeah, and we got to record it. So we. Was that on your Instagram? Over. Yeah, it's on our Instagram. Yeah. I saw it on your Instagram, actually. I remember seeing somebody smashing the ball over it. And, okay, now, all right, well. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I tried. I never get it, so that's cool. <laughs> I, like I, do it, so. <laughs> I tried doing a bicycle kick once, and not only did I lost the point, I lost my leg and my hip. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, guys, yeah. I'm like, what the heck? You've had like um, actually one, like the first, the first one he did was at the beach where he had a sick bicycle kick, landed it. It was. There was no way anyone would have been able to return that. I don't care who you are. Um, uh, and then you did another one somewhere else. Were we? Were we yeah. like? A catch? I don't remember where it was. So I did one also when we're referee training. Uh, oh, that was the bicycle. Yeah, 
out there. That and way. you did one in, in San, San, San Diego. Diego. Yeah, but I heard that the bicycle kick is illegal unless a part of my body is touching the floor while yeah. I'm doing the bicycle. So it's a bummer. So would my karate chop that. not be okay? No, no it's you are fine. fine. Yeah. The that ball, okay. you're fine. The ball is not above your head. Karate. Wanna <laughs> <Yeah>. do? <laughs> With that one. <laughs> you're saying she had she had a good one in uh in san diego oh uh, we're going over a couple of bicycles that i've been able i think i did like three bicycles on the table i was able to score a point but yeah uh they're actually illegal to do unless i'm touching the floor either my hand or the other leg so it's very difficult to do a bicycle and actually get a point because of the ruling system as far so as what about, defensive stuff, we we're all pretty good, honestly. I think we've yeah. all had a fair share of like returning some pretty hard smashes. Um, yeah, and sometimes it is just about just trying to make contact. Like you don't even think you may not get it, but it works out. Like with doubles, it's sometimes just all about having like popping the ball up in the air, you know, and then yeah. go from there. But yeah, and just having a quick reaction. But those, when you return or like you're able to pop up a really great uh, smash, that's probably one of the greatest feelings. Yeah. I was yeah. just about to ask, wait, which which one would you choose to have a good return or to have a good smash? Ooh. I mean, obviously, I would love to have a smash that no one can return, you know? Defense. Come on. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hot ham. <laughs> <Be on it. laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually had a, I don't know if you remember this, Andres, but uh, I returned, we were on our third set during that quarterfinal game, and um, it was, a, it was a super close three sets, I mean, they were both all within like three points, and so, yeah. like, you know, they were really, really close, and so we were in the third set, and I forget exactly what the score was, but we were getting close to 12 at that point, and you smashed one on me, and I returned it. And it was crazy. And then, oh my gosh, I can't. Um, there's a rule in tech ball where um, your final attacking ball over the table um, can't be re repeated twice in a row. So if your opponent returns the rally, um, say, for example, I head it over, um, the next time I can't head, or I have to use my right foot or my left foot or some other body. Oh. And so, I had returned it and I'm usually super disciplined about like, okay, like don't return it with that body part. But I was a little mentally distracted because I was just like, holy crap, I can't believe I just returned that. <laughs> 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 and then I sent it over with the same body part again. And then I lost, and then I lost the point. Yeah, I clearly do remember that. Um, yeah, you, re you, you saved it, returned it with the right foot and, and then he, played it back and then you use the right foot again and we were all like no no it was like such an incredible <laughs> save and then i blew it and then i, I lost was bummed out for you definitely still like... yeah it, it was a great moment yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah yeah i was sad for you i'm not gonna lie like like damn you, you did all that work and then you did a repeated touch carol come on i know <laughs> oh god i think that was my first one the Where whole you... tournament or something <laughs> No, what do you all prefer? Do you prefer uh, doubles or singles? Singles. Oh, no, I Who like singles. Honestly, That's a great question. Singles. Right, right. <laughs> I like playing both, but I like singles yeah. a little more. Honestly, if you asked me that question before this San Diego Challenger Cup, I one hundred percent would not even think about it, and I would say doubles in a heartbeat. Um, and I think that's like for, for us, I think for the most part, we didn't, we've never really, uh, taken the time to kind of try to build our singles game up. Um, but I think now with like this one, uh, challenger cup under our belt and like really actually like practicing a little more with our singles for myself personally, I'm like, I, I actually really enjoy both. They're, they're just so different. The game is yeah, completely right, different. Right. Yeah. Oh, uh, as far as singles. I find it so much more challenging, obviously, when you're by yourself. You gotta get back, back and forth, rally. When it comes to doubles, you can rely on the other person. And if they screw up, I'm blaming you. I'm not saying the fault. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, that's the thing. Like, I feel like with, uh, personally, for me, I, I would respond to doubles because I know individually I won't be able to, able to go back and forth for so long with you. But in doubles, I feel 
on my side, I'd be able to, well, to last a lot longer. But if you could, if you say the individual game is, is just as fun as the doubles game, I have to work my individual game to them. Yeah, for sure. You know, once you kind of find your, uh, like, everyone has a different style of play, especially, like, you know, in singles, it's it's all you. Uh, yeah. Obviously, with doubles as well, like, you have to find what works with you and your partner. But, yeah, once you kind of find your, like, your style and, like, what you like to do, it be, it's so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the cool thing about tech ball. You, like, you can play with your own style. Right now, I need a partner, so I'm Thierry Henry. I need Dennis Burkham next. So, Andres, man, listen, you're a fan. If you want to join me, let me know. We got a double seat going, all right? All right, I'm, I'm going to dye my hair. One. There we go. Right, I'm going to go. Oh. Going I'm going for it. Davies Burkham look. There you go. <laughs> listen, I'm actually going to stop the call because I'm actually, I have to do, I do got to be out and my phone's almost dead. So, it was wonderful meeting you all. Thank you so much. Um, they went to Ricky and Marco. Stay with you guys. Have a wonderful day and be safe, all right? All right, right. We want to close up. We want to close up with that okay, right. Go, Gunners, go. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> you don't have to do that. Yeah, so we're, we're we, actually... we booted them out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Eric didn't leave. We we kicked because he kept talking about Arsenal and he couldn't control himself. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. We're we're actually in the last uh, few minutes. There are two things that I want to touch on really quickly uh that I do want to make uh that I do want to highlight actually. There's there's one conversation about making tech ball an Olympic sport. That's kind of like this big uh, that's that's the future goal. That's that's the big idea, the bigger picture, if you will. Uh, what would it, each of you, uh, any of you, can chime in? What would you say uh, about your your vision or, or how you see Tech Ball is able to make this happen? Let uh, let's say specifically within your local leagues, your, your the cups that you're in. Um, do you see this as a uh, as something that Tech Ball can reach? Let's say within the next few years. Um, what is something that you think needs to happen in order for Tech Ball to to make it to the to the Olympics? Uh, Mark, you want to take the lead on that one? Well, I was waiting to see know. what you guys would say about that one, because <laughs> you guys know I'm like, a talker. Cover. Yeah, yeah, I know you cover a lot, so I'm like, eh, he can go first, and we'll we'll retouch. <laughs> well, I always like to use the example of uh, one of my other favorite sports. Believe it or not, I'm a huge beach volleyball player as well. Um, I'm just not huge <laughs> so i <laughs> never got uh the chance to really play all that well but i, I could still hang um yeah, for sure. so beach volleyball started as a uh demonstration a demo uh sport um in the olympics so it was just demoed and uh from there um you've noticed that in every beach of the world people were playing beach volleyball especially because volleyball was a uh, four on four five on five indoor sport not a lot of people had that access so they'd be playing on the um so there you go with the inclusion and uh its growth everybody was playing it was bound to be an olympic sport highly competitive extremely beautiful to watch um and then the skill level of it was awesome especially the novelty of it you're playing volleyball in the sand it was mind blown for everybody so how do you make a sport an olympic sport in such a small time well you need to make sure everybody's playing the cool thing about this table right here is that you could go one versus one so now you you have all the competition available with just two people so our job is to well mainly what i'm trying to do is to put it in front of as many people as you can in the grassroots way and the only way you do is that is by linking up with clubs organizations facilities and anyone that wants to play the novelty of the sport and the skill level and the difficulty is more than an attractive to get everybody to play and um it's definitely on its path i would say it's it's a couple steps ahead already with uh over 45 countries and olympic committees already uh involved and um i don't know the exact number but you need about 75 of them to agree um on being a, an olympic sport uh, for example, uh, the African Olympic Committee, the uh, Asian Olympic Committee, all of them are on board of making this Olympic sport. And here in the U.S., you need to be in the Pan Americans, right? So I don't know if you guys right. know, but the Pan American Games uh, hosted futsal last time, 
And so, you know, futsal has been around since the 60s and they're still not in the Olympic uh, Games and they're not in every single Olympic committee. So that's why I say that tech ball is at least three steps ahead because we're in 45 Olympic out of uh, 70 plus that you need. So um, sure. just because this game is so awesome, it's, it's well on its way and that's how you get it there. Okay. If the rest of your team uh, have anything to add, to what you think is, uh, I think, the best path for this to become an Olympic sport. Is there something that you might predict, maybe even, for the popularity of tech ball? And let's say in the next five years or so? I think it's uh, definitely a, a goal that can be achieved. Um, we have all the faith that, I mean, people love it as soon as they play it. So, yeah, it's on us to expand and make sure, like Mark said, uh, put a table in front of people and let them figure it out for themselves, like how much they're going to love it. And, um, yeah, it doesn't take more than a few minutes of interacting with the table to figure out that, you know, you got attracted to it very easily. Um, and, yeah, it's such a discipline. It requires such a discipline to, to compete at a high level that um, I think it's very, very cool for an Olympic sport. Um, yeah, it's a lot of self-control in the game, a lot of mind control in the game. So, yeah, it, it will be cool to see it uh, at an Olympic level. and what people from all over the world can do and how they can bring their own style to the game. That's something I think will be fun to watch. Yeah, yeah I 100% com I agree completely. Um, and it's honestly like we do like activations and stuff where we go out to different places. And I've noticed that like people who have played just once with us um, will actually look for us to come out to play again. And they're like, we could not mm -hmm. wait. So you guys are back at this location so we can play on this table again because it's like no other sport and um that's what what we've what we've all noticed and i think the more it becomes available to people and that's exactly what our whole thing is like what mark said is we're growing it from the grassroots and the more it becomes available to everyone um i think it's really just gonna take off like it, it already is um just in this short amount of time that we've been um you know, out here, it's been doing awesome. So I absolutely think that uh, it's, it's, it will happen for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd like to reiterate exactly what you just said, Nancy, that, um, you know, we're really, to call any of us like experts on tech ball at this point would be kind of ridiculous because we've all been on board as of this year. Um, but, you know, all of us have organically been at the grassroots level and seen firsthand, you know, the way that this grabs hold of people, including ourselves being football players. Um, so I think that's like something that we really relate to. And, you know, there are much smarter people um, business wise ahead of us um, that are, you know, working on that. And, you know, that's what I would like to throw in. <laughs> that's a great point no it is it, it the still like you said the grassroots firsthand experience that you have you kind of like boots on the ground if you will that that's very valuable um so that's something that we did want to get you guys to, to share with us uh last one of the last questions here we've seen a few uh tech ball i guess shout outs from a lot of famous players uh there were recently some videos that were that were posted up uh, we have some of the United squad playing with the tech ball table. There are some customized tables as well that were given out to the likes of like Ronaldinho, Maradona, and, uh, and others. Um, for each of you, if you had the chance to play a one-on-one -on -one with a professional player, male or female, who would that be? Great question. Man, are you about to call her out or am I, or am I going to? <laughs> I know you are. <laughs> I would be really curious to see how I would play against uh, the Brazilian superstar, Natalia. Uh, okay. Uh, I would be really curious to see like a one-on-one -on -one match between me and her. Um, one, I mean, I totally think she's an incredible athlete, but two is I am too. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I would love to see how that goes. Yeah. Carol, do you want to explain who Natalia Geetler is? What? You want to explain to uh, our public here who Natalia Geetler is? Yeah, so uh, Natalia Geetler is my biggest competition. 
actually. Yeah. So she's Brazilian. Uh, she is the most recent doubles champion. Is that correct? Of the World Cup? Yeah, mixed doubles, uh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, she really changed the game for women in the sport. Um, so she, uh, Andres, you can even speak on this because I'm not sure exactly, but I think they incorporated um, women in mixed doubles because she competed or something on this is that yeah so in 2018 she was competing in the doubles competition as a female and made it all the way to the third place match uh and i think i don't know if she ended up taking the third place or not but she did play with marquinhos and in 2018 there weren't any mixed doubles and i think because of her uh experience playing tech ball they included a mixed doubles for the following year in 2019 so she has a lot to do with the expansion of females in uh tech ball yeah that's amazing it's awesome. yeah yes. so it's just really admirable like i totally respect her in every way shape and form and i've actually never really felt like that about anyone where i'm like wow i really like respect you as an athlete and i really want to kick your ass too <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And to confirm, we love the energy. We love that energy. We're here for it, Carol. We yeah. really are. <laughs> Nancy and Andre. <laughs> oh. Man, what you got? Um, I honestly, yeah, I, I wasn't going to call out Natalia. I know you're like, who? I thought you were going to call someone else out. Um, oh, no. But yeah, no, I think it would be like amazing to play with like, I would love to play one-on-one -on -one with Ronaldinho just to play with like a legend. I think that would be, uh, it would just be an honor just to be on the, the table with him and to just have that experience um, to say that I got to play with him would be amazing. Um, yeah, that would be yeah. pretty cool. That would be so cool. That's awesome. Who you got, Andres? Are you going you gonna to call someone out too? Uh, I think... I would have, I mean, I think he will still beat me, but I would like to see him in a, in a young, like maybe 10 years ago, uh, Sinadine Zidane. Oh, um, wow. French players have an amazing technical ability. And um, yeah, he was one of the most technical players out there. So I think Zidane in tech ball will be almost unbeatable. Uh, and yeah, big challenge. I'm trying to think. Kito. Marco. Marco, you gotta you gotta let us know, man. Who would you play against on the table? Wait, Mark or Marco? Marco. No, oh, I was like, I was like, I don't know. If you're talking to me, <laughs> bro. Anybody will kick my ass. You're my little nephew. But if I had to, <laughs> if I if I had to choose one person, uh, it would have to be Roberto Carlos from Brazil and old oh. Roberto Madridista. I think his touch and the way that he has able to not only uh, be part of the sport but <clears throat> the way that he dominates the ball. I I'd love to see it. He can kick my ass any time of the day. I would love to play again. <laughs> oh, wow. That would be a nice one. Uh, the last two are Ricky and Mark. Ricky, you go first. Oh, me? Oh. Dang. Okay. I was also going to say Ronaldinho. I mean, he's he's my favorite player. So, you know, it, it, it would just be so awesome to play uh, tech ball with him. I would definitely love to play with Ronaldinho just because he is basically a, he's the king of all the subcultures of soccer as well. Like freestyle, he's the ambassador for freestyle. He's the ambassador for tech ball, football. He basically all the sports that I love to play, Ronaldinho. Prison soccer. Yeah, exactly. So I would love to play against Ronaldinho. But <laughs> if I were to really hand pick, I would pick Marcelo from uh, Real Madrid. Yeah. Because like, he was okay. he was like my next my next uh, option because. He's, he's such phenomenal. Amazing. Yeah. He is honestly, uh, I, I really don't like the fact that he's, you know, Madridista. He's a he's place for Real Madrid. But uh, if you follow him and, and you've seen, he is one of the, dude, just most the best. technical players the ever. Then when I beat him by playing safe, I'm going to be like, you just got Simeone. <laughs> <laughs> you just got Simeone. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, oh, That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Mark like, playing cool. defense the whole game. And just play defense yeah. the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Diego? Me? Listen, uh, 
I'm, I want to remain humble just like Andres. I don't want to embarrass anybody. And a lot of these professional players, their their careers could be on the line. So I, I did see I did see some uh for me personally, I know there's a lot of a lot of very skilled footballers that can transition into tech ball well. That's something that I wanted to point out. There's there's some players that actually do pretty well on the table and others don't don't really have the the um I guess the reaction time because I don't want to take away from their skill. Uh, not many others have the reaction time to play, but Seeing, um, I highlighted the the post that uh, Manchester United had put up when they were playing on the table. You had Martial and Bruno Fernandez on there. You know what? I, I would play against Bruno Fernandez. It would be cool to have someone that just experienced the table. So it kind of, it's a little bit level, and that way we can both use the excuse that we haven't played that much before. So it's, it, I think it would be, it would be even. I know there's a lot of fantastic legends to pick from. But I know right now, me personally, I would probably pick Fernandez just because it, it, uh, uh, it holds value presently, like today. Uh, someone right. who's, who's also experiencing the table and who's also experiencing the joy of getting onto, you know, a rally or making that return, like Nancy was saying, or, or putting in that uh, unreturnable smash um, like Andres has done probably several times. The last question to kind of end this uh, quarantine podcast episodes what comes to mind when we say the word bench warmer what does that mean to each of you technical director <laughs> like that i've sat on the bench uh, uh when, when i was in uh, high school i was one of the only freshmen that was like picked to kind of supplement one of the uh the senior teams but i'd only be on the bench right but i was basically coming up with tactics i'm like Bro, the 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 third uh, the third party view shows you a lot of stuff. So I I I would have to say technical director. Nice. I will <laughs> I will say underrated. Okay. Um, I've I've had to you know be on the bench a lot of times in my life, and you know uh, a lot of being on the bench is what attitude are you bringing to the team from the bench, and you can be a great teammate from the bench as well and motivate your teammates to do better. And, and you know, and be ready when, if you're studying the game and you're you have, you have a good attitude. Once you come in the game, you might be ready to never leave it. So the bench could be a great opportunity to learn. And uh, yeah, I think people on the bench sometimes go underrated. Dang, mm-hmm. took the words right out of my mouth. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, how about this, Nancy? Is there a time where you found yourself? to be on the bench yep yeah it's definitely um it was a very trying time for me and it was Mm -hmm. um a lot more mental it can take you to a place where you start to question your ability um so yeah I mean especially if you're like used to being on a team where you're like the star and you're always starting and you have like records and all this sometimes you might be on a team and they may not see you fit for playing for whatever reason. Um, But I think it's always important to not doubt your ability and not to doubt your skill and to not get into your head and to just keep grinding, keep working hard. So regardless if you are on the bench or on the field, um, you still have to just keep, uh, keep the hustle going. Can't stop the hustle for sure. I guess when I think of like bench warmers, um, when I played high school soccer, um, I was kind of bad. I had bad attendance in high school. I had really good grades, bad attendance. Um, and there was this rule that if you missed high school practice, which I was, mind you, also playing club soccer and doing to get good grades. So that's why I had bad attendance, trying to balance things. <laughs> and I, so I, my coach would not start me because I would not show up to practice but then he'd sub me in a few minutes later and it was always it would make me panic so much like sitting on the bench just during those like few minutes for whatever reason it's a big difference when you're like coming off of the bench trying to make an impact even if it's just a few minutes into the game like my experience there um it's you know when you have that momentum on the field it's so much easier to just play 
So I think that's a nice uh, or an interesting challenge for players that are coming off of the bench and having to bring that extra spice. Because when you do have that player on your team that comes in, you're like, heck yeah, like this person's going to change the tempo out there. And um, it's nice to have that, that player on the team. I love that. I like that. <laughs> Ricky, before I cut you off, you were getting us your take on what bench warmer means. Well, it was more so a, a funny story about an experience that I had from the bench. So I was in high school and um, I, I had just moved into this, into this town, into this high school. So um, I joined late. So because I joined late, I had to start in, in JB, uh, junior varsity team. Um, so I had a few games in and then um, one time I get the call up to varsity. So uh, I'm, I'm, in vars- I'm in the varsity team and uh, of course I'm, I'm on the bench and then uh, it's a corner kick and the coach puts me in. He's like, okay, go ahead. And so he puts me in. And so, you know, I had been doing very well in, in junior varsity team. It was, it was somewhat easy, you know, the, the, the play or whatever. So I, I came in very overconfident. So it's a corner kick and I'm sure I'm a short guy. And then all these guys were playing like their towers compared to me. So it's a corner kick. This guy literally just pushes me and I fall. They almost scored. And then, and then it's like out of bounds. And then the coach takes me right out. So it was literally. <laughs> oh, what a sad uh, thing. <laughs> wow. Uh, I it was a sad you know, you gotta be ready. So, um, I, it was a learning experience. It's hilarious to, you know, to remember it. But um, from there on, I, I, I learned, like, you know, okay, I need to be ready. And I need to, like, you know, really come in focus. Yeah. Oh, wow. What an experience. Yeah, <laughs> Marco, you got, a, you got a bench warmer story, Marco, for us? Well, living on the bench. Um, because that's all. <laughs> that's the only place I've played. Uh, no, as a kid, I, I, <laughs> as, 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 <laughs> yeah, center bench. I, I've been, I've been there uh, in every single seat. Um, no, it's just I think I think one of the things that I've learned the most is actually coming off the bench, and it's because you get to see what your teammates are capable of and what it's lacking and what you can bring to the team. Um. So you you get to learn a little bit more about the game. Um, so every time I had the chance, which is very little, uh, I would try to fill in those gaps every time I came into the game. Um, sadly, I wasn't part of big teams or playing in high school. We played in the streets because I grew up in Guatemala. Uh, so it was more of a five on the side. So it was a lot of more kick to the shin and the ankles than kicking the ball. But... <laughs> <laughs> but I, I was I was able to learn a little bit and and that's where a lot of my my love for the sport came from. Um was just sitting on the bench and watching my friends play. See, that's heartwarming. That's heartwarming. <laughs> and let's let's be honest, the bench warmers are the coolest guys on your team. Like n- hands down, the coolest guys on your team, the funniest guys uh-huh. are all the bench warmers. Those are the coolest usually, guys. Usually yeah, usually there's those usually are the guys. some good comedy happening there, that's for sure. There's something going. There's always something going on when you're on the bench. Um, yeah, for sure. If you're not paying attention to the game, it's because you're being distracted by one of your teammates. That's doing something. Oh my dumb. gosh, I yeah, forgot yeah. about this. I had a team that would. Um, it was during the time that Hunger Games was really popular. Whenever someone got subbed onto the on from off of the bench, everybody on the bench would go up with their fingers and like <laughs> you know, salute to the volunteer who's going in <laughs> as the sacrifice. What was it? The sacrifice or yeah. what? Yeah, yeah, the sacrifice. Yeah, yeah. It was a tribute. It was a tribute. Yeah, yeah. and we, everybody would go like that. It was so- <laughs> yes. Um, are there any uh upcoming tournaments or events that you guys are are doing in your area that people? I know with all this pandemic going on, um, they might stall, but anything that that you guys have that you guys want to promote or shout out. Ricky, thank you so much for asking that. Um, so again, um, we know the effects of, uh, every company, man, woman, boy, whatever, whatever have you, we're all on hiatus right now. So right now, um, as you can see, tech ball is nonstop and especially everything behind the scenes. So, um, right now we're working with, uh, what's going to be, uh, Chatsworth, uh, facility. Chatsworth is in 
a little bit north of Los Angeles. It's a great area for, for soccer. A lot of big names have come from um, every soccer club from north of LA. So it's a huge facility. It's going to be an amazing tournament. Um, we are working on having a female-only tournament uh, that works in tandem with the doubles and the singles. I, it's going to be absolutely bonkers. We're going to have a lot of community-based sponsors, which will be restaurants, a couple of uh, places of, of, of you know, just regular businesses around there. But it's going to be amazing. We're looking at uh, the city has told us that we're going to have to push back another month. So maybe May, if we push back, just stay tuned. Nancy's going to give you all the social media handles, but it's going to be our biggest Challenger Cup yet. It's going to be CC number three, Challenger Cup number three. Um, and uh, again, it's going to be huge. A women's only tournament with all the singles and the doubles. Uh, it's going to be an amazing. We're going to be partnering up with uh, Apex Club and uh, the guys named Pico. We just had a conversation with them. Very, very right here. But by the time we're done, it's going to be well, phoned up. That's awesome. That's exciting to hear. Definitely look forward to, uh, you know, getting the, the dates once all of this crazy times are over. So, uh, I do want to lead into right now, I guess, transitioning to wrapping up this conversation. All of you have been a fantastic guest. You all have great speaking ability as far as, you know, making great points. Um, I really appreciate, we all appreciate here on the bench that you were all able to share your personal experiences with the table. Um, we're together with you in terms of helping spread the word out and increase the brand awareness for tech ball here on the East coast, as much as you are on the West coast, you know, we might, we might not have uh, as much sun or as frequent <laughs> sunny days as you do to play outside by the beach, but um, we are out there in terms of bringing it out to local events, just like you are and participating in uh, maybe even small, small sided yeah. tournaments uh, and things like that. So I do want to thank you all just before we sign off, uh, reintroducing Mark, Andres, Nancy, and Carol from LA Techers who joined us here today, uh, who joined the bench. They are fellow bench warmers. Uh, and if you listeners follow LA Techers, um, you know, to stay updated with all, all their events that they have going. Nancy, would you like to plug in all of your accounts for so that people can stay tuned to your latest updates for any tournaments that are in the upcoming future and to get the latest technical content over with LA Techers? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we are on just about every social platform. So um, and we're all under the same name, LA Techers, uh, Techers with a Q, so T E Q E R S. Um, and you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, we are on TikTok. We've got some really funny videos on there. Um, and then we've also got a YouTube channel. Um, and so for, for those of you guys who are interested and want to come out to events, once all of this is over, you know, we're out back, um, doing activations and getting all of our cups, our challenger cups going. Um, we do post on, on our social media site. And as you guys can see on Mark's t-shirt, LA Techers, there it is. Um, <laughs> we do post uh, where we'll be. So if you're in the area, we we are out in like Santa Monica area, Orange County in California, um, and then a little bit in the Valley. So we, we kind of hop around. So if you're ever in the area and you want to just give it a try, follow us on Instagram and all of our social media, and you'll see where we're going to be and what events we've got going on. Mark, I appreciate you doing that. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, and uh, we do actually, uh, as of right now, we're doing like a lot of fun challenges on our uh, Instagram and um, you guys can feel free to jump in there and we'll be reposting some of our favorites on our challenges. That'd be great. That's awesome. Yeah. We're looking forward to that. Yeah. Yeah, and then you guys can get to know us. We've been doing some uh, IG lives where we get to know each techer uh, outside of soccer. So you guys can catch us on social media, holler at us, send us a message. Fantastic, yeah. Nancy. Thank you very much. Thank you all of you again uh, for joining this call, especially during these times. I do want to give another shout out, a round of applause to all of you, both to Nancy and Carol, 
to Andres and Mark. Uh, we are the bench warmers. We do want to remind you that you can catch us on the podcast. And I want to tag in Marco to see if he remembers All right, where you they can... can listen to us. All right, they can listen to us on on uh, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts by searching Bench Warmers FC. It's been a minute. Nice. And where can they watch us, Ricky? They can watch us on YouTube by searching Bench Warmers and FC TV. And Eric unfortunately had to leave. This is usually his bit, but you can find us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook by searching the handle Bench Warmers FC1. And you can also write to us by emailing our address at benched at benchwarmersfc.com. You can also check out that site that we've been building for all of you. And make sure we're encouraging everyone to get in touch with us, comment, like, subscribe, leave your reactions to this video. We want to know uh, if anyone is around locally for these events. So we're pushing tech ball here as well. We want to try to increase the exposure for everyone to try out this amazing sport. And I think we're going to call it there. It's been an awesome time with all of you guys. Thank you very much again for joining us, for taking some time out of your day, out of your busy quarantine days. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's, it's been a great pleasure to meet and chat with you all. Likewise. Thank you guys Thank for you having guys. us. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, yeah. it was really it was fun to pencil you in, but I'm glad we did. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. That was a great episode. It was a great time sitting down with everyone at LA Techers, Mark, Nancy, Carolyn, and Andres. We are the Bench Warmers. This is the bench with voice. So the bench is always at home. We are the bench warmers. This is the bench with voice. The bench is always born. Catch on the next one, guys. <laughs>